Hello everyone, it's Popeye. No, it's uh, Mike Levin, and we're at a point now where we need to start looking at function two with its uh, parameters and arguments. And we know that function one actually uh, evals correctly, so we can start to forget about that. And uh, another thing is, whenever I get up to a question mark, I have a check on whether the cell value is a question mark, but I don't check whether the column is actually a real uh, function column or not. So there's a little bit of cleanup I want to take care of, first of all. Well, you'll see that here's how we check whether it is a function. If f name in globals, so it's the same exact check. And uh, it's not called f name. We don't have f name yet. Actually, what we have is uh, globals globs dot Funks, which is a list of all the function names, and then we have a caldex, and that's actually the exact same thing as what was below. And uh, now I need to indent this other stuff like this, and so this should produce exactly the same output. And it does. We're getting func1 and func2 back. The next thing is to just get func1 back. Now I could do that by just editing it out here, but it occurs to me that this line and this line are exactly the same. So the if fargs statement should actually occur down in here that's being invoked. And so this fargs for just the particular uh, column you're on should be down here. Oh, and it actually is. We have frgs right there. So we don't need this. We don't need this. We need one of those. And we don't need this and we don't need this. So let's take a look at that. Again, the output should be exactly the same. And it is. Now let's try and filter out func1 because frgs on func1 is open curly bracket, close curly bracket, which is an empty dictionary object, and that should evaluate the false. So we only want to return something if frgs. And now it's conditional values being returned, and if the world is good, we should only see func2 in the output. Now, okay, we're seeing nuns and func2s. So, um, yeah, it's expecting something to be returned because there's, there's a print statement here. So to get rid of that, we just get rid of the print statement and we move the print statement down here. So instead of returning the value, we will uh, print it. Now, whether things get printed or returned are, you know, architectural factoring issues of the program that we'll work through as we go. But in the meantime, we're just sort of fleshing out the, the logic flow here. Because there you go, func2, fun, you know, it's from one sheet and from the other sheet. Um, next step, I pause for a moment. Okay, for the sake of keeping it simple, I'm going to make my next step stepping through the dictionary object each time it sees a func2. So we see func2 output five times here. Each time has three parameters. It's kind of difficult to see looking at a dictionary, but the commas are the separate ones. So param1 equals none, param2 equals empty, and param3 equals status. So instead of printing out the, uh, the dictionaries, I'm going to print out each param, so that's going to be uh, 5 times 3, that's going to be 15 lines. I'm going to try and output and get rid of the printing uh, as it is currently. So that means editing out this guy. And we have arg, so we can do for an arg, an arg in fargs print. And uh, we have two things we can print now to 
make sure we're looking at the right thing. I guess we want to still see the F name, comma, and then an arg. Each function should have its three arguments. 15 lines total we're looking for, plus the space in between. There you have it. Uh, every time func2 is encountered, it will look across its three parameters. Okay, pause as we think next step. I'm actually gonna hit enter so I can look at code and think. Okay, it might not be completely obvious, but in that dictionary of function arguments we built, there's this concept of none. And none is, if I jump to the bottom with a shift G, uh, param one here, uh, that has no parameters. That's what gets a none. This gets an empty, and this gets an okay. So the actual thing that's important here, and in fact, if there was a param one comma something else that had no default values, see this is a default value here, and this is a default value here, which means it's really safe. If, if it doesn't discover it's required uh, uh, parameters in the existing row, it can just fill something in. And in fact, we will have an issue here when you're processing a row, if param1, which is required, is actually empty, whether this gets read as an empty, quote, quote, or if it gets read as none, which is not provided at all. And it has very different results, none, and you can't keep functioning, processing the function. If it's empty, you can keep processing it, but it might generate an error because, well, it's empty and it might need something and there's a lot of error handling there. So it might be better to just completely stop processing it all if nothing is in there and come up with some symbol for empty or maybe the word empty. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna handle that, but in any rate, uh, we do wanna detect none at first because it's the most special condition to handle. And that none is the value of a dictionary. So we have an argument from the dictionary but the dictionary is fargs, uh, and to get the value out, you got to put an arg in as you iterate through. Equals equals, because evaluation or equality is a double equals, and assignment is a single equals. Something to get used to in Python and a number of other languages. And none is Python's very special character for, or very special uh, keyword for not set at all. And so now whereas each time func2 is encountered all three parameters show, now each time func2 is encountered only param1 should show. Is that true? Okay, syntax error. Oh, I need an if. If. Yes, I will keep my mistakes intact. One of the valuable lessons here is, well, learning comes just as much or maybe more so from mistakes than it comes from going down the clear, uh, well-traveled path with lots of solid examples. You might get to the finish line more quickly that way, but you might not have learned as much. So I think that's going to be part of my style of these Python videos, and it did exactly what I wanted to. And you can't continue to func to process this if you encounter any of those situations. So, um, but the required parameter is actually provided here. This is very interesting. So I pause while I think through next step. Okay, for my next step, I'm going to demonstrate something to you that will let you understand a trick I'm about to use. The way parameters are passed around in Python, there's a lot of options here. It's very tempting since I'm building a dictionary to actually feed it as a dictionary straight into the function, but the internals of the function need to know you did that. It's something called asterisk args and asterisk keyword args. And I'm not gonna go that route, but I do and am going to rely on the lack of order uh, dependence in invoking a Python function. And you can see 
when you don't provide a default value, this is a default value and this is a default value, you actually have order dependence because they're listed first. So param1 requires, it, it, it has to be provided. You have to provide param1, but there's no default value. So that's enough talking. I'm going to go down to a convenient place to do this test, which is right in main. It's going to be before the main function is even invoked. So I hit O. I'll hit uh, ZZ to recenter so you can see what I'm doing here. And I am going to go into insert mode, tab, and I am going to call func. Two, but I am going to put param2 first and say param2 equals bar. And then I'm going to do comma param1 equals foo. They're out of order, but they're named, and that's what's important. And it's being returned, so I actually need to, uh, to print this. And uh, instead of returning uh, just my params are, I'll actually uh, put, uh, let's see, the best way to do this is with st automatic string formatting. So percent %s, percent %s, I'll make it just support 2. And we got to put this guy here. And then a tuple, which is param1, comma, param2. And this shows us whether we can invoke a function with its params out of order, even if one is required, so long as they're named. Let's see if... Hey! That was quick. My parents are... My params are foo, comma, bar. It's exactly what I needed to see. Now the quote signature that we discovered of the functions is not so much required to have around. Uh, this is the signature, by the way, this guy here, which has the order dependency if there is any. But order dependency doesn't matter so long as you invoke the function with named parameters, even if it wasn't in, named uh, in the signature. So that's a lot of talk in saying that what we need to do is possible. And uh, let's see, let's see. We don't need this anymore because we showed it's possible. And I'll leave that uh, returning param1 and param2 for a while. But now the thing is, mm, what is the thing? We'll be right back. The next step is we're going to have to cover a series of possibilities in building up a string that we're going to eval. So, each argument is either required and its value must be found in the row, or it's not required and it has a default value. And then even if it's not required, if the value is provided in the row, we want to use that. So it's all about building a string right now, and I think it's most important to start visualizing uh, what we're doing. So I'm going to edit out that print for a moment. And I am going to, to uh, make a new function called evalMe. And evalMe is going to be uh, initialized with, uh, we'll slap the parentheses on at, at the end. I'll just make it empty at this uh, top level of the function. And so each time we step through an arg in uh, Fargs, in fact, we're going to edit this guy out too because all we really want is to start building that string. Uh, eval me equals eval me plus the, uh, the function name at this point. Well, no, no, the function name only happens once. Ah, so of course, we need the function name here, f name, and since we're going to use the f name uh, let's use that string replacement. That's always the best way to do this in Python. So it's going to be percent %s, and then immediately you go like this and go fname. 
So we know that the uh, function name is going to be how it opens. Now there's going to be an open parenthesis here. And uh, we don't know anything else at this point. So the string is just function name open parenthesis. And then each time it goes through here, eval me equals eval me plus the argument name. So that's an arg. And it's always going to have an equal. So of course we're in that string stuff again. So um, let's see. I, I'm just going to uh, append it together for clear thinking because we already have something equals something plus. So an arg plus equals. And we don't know exactly what it equals yet. So I'm going to put uh, a placeholder in there, triple x. And then by the time we're done that for loop, we know that eval me has to equal eval me plus the close parenthesis. And then we can print eval me. Let's see if that gives me what I'm expecting, which is something that looks like an invocation of a function that can be executed func2 print. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Now there, there's a few things going on in there. I got to put the commas in and I got to put the, the quotes in. And by putting the quotes in, uh, I might be in quote heck, and I might try and look at how to do this with that uh, other string formatting way of doing this. But uh, for the clarity of thought right now, let's uh, avoid that. Oh, there's going to be string versus integer issues as well when we're feeding stuff in. Let's always feed it in as a string for now. Now you're going to see the difference between single quotes and double quotes in Python. They're exactly the same thing, but it's pretty good form that if you're going to use single quotes for formatting, you use double quotes on the outside. So you got to do this, and we also got to put that comma in. And I'll put a space for easy reading. Execute that again. Yep, that looks a lot more like calling a function. Oh, the, you're going to have the trailing uh, comma issue. That's really interesting. We've got a number of uh, ways to, to do this. Uh, there's Pythonic ways and there's non-Pythonic ways. I'm going to do it in the most non-Pythonic way because I get to demonstrate slices to you. And uh, it's, it's easy. It's the way it would be done in every other language. I might clean this up later. But this, where we put in the, uh, the uh, trailing, uh, the, the closing uh, parenthesis, I know that I can use slice notation here. That is open, close, square bracket, colon in the middle, and I know I need to chop two off the end. Let's see if that's a little more like it. Exactly as it expected. I pause while I think through next step. Okay, next step, I can see just by looking at this that this is going to get really confusing really fast building this stuff together because we're going to have to replace that with a real value. So it's better to use Python's uh, string formatting, you know, token stuff. So I get out of this execution mode and go back to that line. And it should actually be easier than I was uh, worried about. So we're feeding uh, two variables here. We have eval me and narg. So I just uh, x back over those. And then I put uh, two little uh, percent s's in here. And they were, uh, and then I have to put this guy here immediately. And then they were. Uh, f name and uh, an arg, and it has to be tuple. This is one of those cases where you actually have to put the parentheses around it. 
and uh, the output should be exactly the same. Oh no, it was eval. Control C. Made a mistake. It's not F name in an arc. It's something equals itself plus something. So actually, eval me goes in there, interestingly. And uh, eval me equals eval me plus F name. We're not up to an arg yet. Now the output should be exactly the same. Yay, it is. Uh, func two, oh wait, func two equals, it's, we're not getting the parameter names for the, uh, the second replacement. So, oh yeah, I put f name in there. Uh, it actually is an arg, we are up to that. We're just not up to the, the values of an arg. So again, I'm making every mistake possible, but you learn from your mistakes, and lesson learned here is think it through more clearly in your mind, and test and test and test. And that is exactly what I want. It's going to be a lot easier to format this uh, eval me statement. I pause. Okay, I think I'm going to cut it there, because the next step of replacing these triple X's requires using uh, the value provided on the row, if it's provided, for a parameter, or to use the default value if it's not, and that would be just too large of a tutorial. So I cut it here, and I guess uh, I'll make the video about this string replacement in Python uh, using tuples. And uh, thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you soon, and don't forget to subscribe.